here to ask a new wall. And Don the Eagle sent some questions that we should address. It's kind of a multi-part question, so let's uh, attack it by bit. My other questions for this series are, could you tell us something about what the Toltecs mean for Eagle and your experiences about it? Okay. In the original myth, the map of the Tolteca, their concept of spirit was an all-pervading power in the universe that was also called the emanations of the eagle. Those emanations are also referred to as the colored dust or in some Nawada languages, the tonali, meaning that the uh, Nawada word for it is about the fibers that run through everyone, everything on the planet, that actually animate, give life, and are the fabric of this entire planet and the universe. They all originate at the eagle. The eagle being a word that, uh, to them at the beginning, the uh, animal that flew the highest, that saw the furthest, and they'd use animal analogies like um, many indigenous tribes. For example, like Sitting Bull was not a bull, but he had those attributes. So the attributes of the eagle were given to this power. Now this is not God. The emanations and the eagle are the threshold after you leave your physical body and you have to re-give the energy that was given to you at birth back to the eagle. Now that means that you become part of the fabric and, and unless you're a sorcerer who creates a double to get past the talons of the eagle, your body is disseminated and torn apart with the talons and put back into the energy fabric of the universe. My personal experiences with the eagle in this metaphor uh, are, are rather elaborate in the fact that as a sorcerer you have to have a death journey in order to um, get near that image of that power. And in that death journey I was lucky enough because I was in a, a wild power spot in nature to have a sorcerer brother with me who kept my body protected and also reminded me that one of the bright stars was my family. He used that as a metaphor and that was a reason for me to come back and not go through past the eagle and leave my burnt cinder of a body there on the ridge line. When I was contemplating what this was one day, walking again in wild nature, I looked up in the heavens and I saw the three stars of the belt of Orion. If you extend that belt out to the other stars, you also have an image of an eagle. You have the wings, you have the head as one of the stars, and you have two tail feathers, other stars that are radiating out from the belt. That is also a representation of the bigness of this power of the eagle. The final analogy that came to me that is beautiful is if we consider the night sky, the complete dark night sky, to be the uh, vitreous uh, matter of an eye, and that the moon is just a mere reflection off the pupil of the eye of the eagle. That's how big the eagle is. The whole night sky is simply its eye. All of these are ways of us trying to comprehend the incomprehensible. This is part of the unknowable. This structure is, is something that we don't have to know. Part of a spiritual path is not having all of the information, believing because we want to believe. If you want to believe, then you want to believe in magic, you want to believe in mystery, and you want to believe that your creativity will create images of the eagle that will last you and sustain you on a very difficult, difficult path to awareness. Nice. Where <clears throat> did the Toltecs come from? What was their origin? This is uh, a fascinating question, Don, because it all begins somewhere. 
As far as the, all of the codexes and the tracings we can do through uh, Plato and his writings, we begin our journey at Atlantis. Now, a lot of seers in Egypt wrote about Atlantis, about root races. The fourth root race in the system, it's also in the secret doctrine by Volansky, the fourth root race in Atlantis were the Toltecs. The Toltecs were known for building their pyramids, they were known for creating civilizations. So when they left Atlantis, they continued that process in Mesoamerica where they used the name Tolteca, and in Egypt they used other terms like Egyptian. However, they used the emanations from those earth nodes to create different forms of pyramids, different forms of art, because this is all flexible uh, based on where you're walking and what, what the land is that you're in. That's part of the beauty of the Toltecs, is that their images were adaptable to the place that emanated that information in the earth itself. And that's also a definition of a power spot. Now, where did they, where did they come from before Atlantis, which is an earth-based thing? That's traced back to Mars. Mars was the home. The, the, the myth of the Toltec is that they are constantly going closer and closer till eventually they reach the sun. So after the Earth, they will go to Mercury, and then they will go on Venus. to be... Uh, yeah, right, Venus and Mercury. Then they will be absorbed by the sun. That is one route to be as, as part of the light of the sun. Those in my lineage who will become world builders like the Anunnaki, they will want to go further past the guardian at the threshold, which is called the eagle, and go on to use their talents because their path is about continual creativity, not to be absorbed by the sun's power. So those are the two routes you can take as a Toltec. When they were on Mars, I should bring up that they had pets there that were docile considered them as nice, sweet dogs or cats. When they came to the Earth, again, because they're traveling towards the sun, they're also looking for planets to seed into awareness. When they came into the Earth, they created a portal to bring through some of their pets. These inorganic pets, when they got to Earth, became hungry ghosts. And those are what are called now the flyers. Toltecs were responsible for bringing them through the portal. They went crazy and started feeding off the luminosity of humans here, and that was a mistake. Don't bring your pets with you. Keep them at home. And you kind of answered this, but you may have something to add. In which countries on Earth have they left their marks? The Toltecs. Right. Toltecs have left their marks wherever they have ventured. Let's start with the original landscapes. The original landscapes, like um, let's say Mesoamerica, uh, the mountains outside of Teotihuacan, those are the areas where they began to leave their first marks. It wasn't building the giant pyramids. They started underground after they had been in the mountains leaving marks. And those marks are simple rock, current. They are formations for other sorcerers to see. you got to understand that they were hunter-gatherers and they were traveling. As a matter of fact, they originally were disguised as jaguars with jaguar claws. They didn't originate with the Olmecs. The Olmecs were another faction and they've been associated with the Quetzalcoatl lineage of Toltecs because the Olmecs honored them in some of their rock art. But they honored them because they were adversaries. They were in the, they were in the deep jungles. They were the jaguar seers. They were the ones that the Toltecs uh, they stayed away from the old necks. So when they went north, they also went all the way to Chaco Canyon. They left marks there. They left dreamer doors by a sandwich of stones. Then the Kiva structures came later. They left markers in New Mexico at certain creeks that follow the um, uh, Rio Grande. So the furthest they went in Northern California was kind of in the Bay Area there. There are markers left there, stone walls. My benefactor was brought up there to validate all the seeing. So these are subtle markers. The more magnificent pieces of art that developed over time in their civilizations are the pyramidal work in the Middle East and the pyramidal work in Mesoamerica. Recently there's um, hints of 
pyramids in Bosnia. Wherever you see pyramidal structures, that is a Toltec influence. Even the Toltec mounds that are in the eastern part of the United States are the influence of the Toltecs. Whenever you see the iconic serpents, the intertwined serpents of DNA, the caduceus, the uh, serpents in Egyptian doorways, the headdresses, obviously the serpiente throughout Toltec and Mesoamerica, those are all from the intention of the Toltecs to create symbols that represent the rising power of sexuality from the earth to the sky, the rising power of creativity from the earth to the sky, eagle, serpiente, Don Aguila, you find them in Italy, and this is knowledge that is so part of your bloodline that it has brought you and I together, my brother, here on the waves of the fabric of the internet. And we will be waving again soon, and again, I, even if you think it might be a silly question, ask it in the comments, and we'll see you the next time, we hope.